I've made a handful of AI-generated cars. I'd use ChatGPT, Google Gemini, and Microsoft Copilot to take down the undefeated ChatGPT car, the Nexa Aventura. I decided to check out another AI chatbot that's not GPT-powered called Croc. I had to buy a Twitter or X premium subscription for $8 to get access to this chatbot in hopes of defeating the Aventura. Hey guys, it's Tris here, and this is the main screen for Grok on Twitter.com, Rex.com, whatever you call it. So as per usual, with the build list like I've been doing for the other AI chatbots, what I got here is a naturally aspirated build list, just like the Aventura, is that we're going to be asking Grok to design a made-up economical gas vehicle from 2020 with all of these stats here in automation to be driven at BMG Drive to take down that car once and for all. So hit Control c to copy, and Control v into Grok's prompt, and hit Enter, and see what we can design, if it can design, or generate the list here. Uh... Huh? I'm afraid- I'm afraid I can't fulfill this request. I am not a vehicle design AI. <laughs> uh, provide knowledge on information and assistance. Uh, did I waste $8 for this? Come on, Grok. You spell it the Grok is cooking. So with the build list here, the naturally aspirated and the turbocharged one, it is free to use and free to download if you check out the description and in the pinned comment below to see... I'm afraid that's not something I can do. I don't have uh, the detailed specifications. God damn you built Grok for this reason, to not be woke like ChatGPT according to Elon Musk. So yeah, those build lists are available on trismedia.com in the description or in the pinned comment. So what if I do this again? I know there's another list. This is fun mode right now. Let's see, one more time. Please. Don't ellipsis me, man. Don't leave me hanging. You're woke. Okay, regular mode. There's also Grok V1. Is this because this is for Premium Plus people or what? Okay, regular mode. Please design this car in regular mode. Maybe it cannot generate in regular mode. Please try again. Won't Sprite Cranberry? Starting a new chat. Copy-paste. Please. In regular mode. It did work earlier, like... Okay, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. The 2010 Economical Gas Vehicle. You had to do it in regular mode. So, it's a sedan, eco-drive, midnight blue, partial, right? Okay, not too bad. Plus 10 to chassis material, or the quality. Not too bad. Not too bad of a start, as of right now. So, this 2010 EcoDrive E10 is designed to provide a balance of efficiency and comfort with modern safety and entertainment features. This is not that bad of a list that Grok has built for me, but I had to do it in regular mode and not fun mode because it's kind of weird. It's not capable of designing a car like the list in fun mode, but it can in regular mode. Alright, so let's go in, click the play button, and jump in an automation, take note of what Grok said, and design the car as is in automation. So here we are in automation with my 2010 sedan. The one we'll be choosing is this 2005, I believe a mod body, uh, 10's family sedan body. So hold on a minute, so for the Eco Drive E10, first of all, for the panel material, it'll be made out of partial aluminum with a monocoque chassis made out of light AHS steel for chassis material. For the engine, it's going to be a front transverse engine placement with a McPherson strut front suspension, and the rear is a semi-trailing arm. With the chassis quality, it's pretty nice at a plus 10. That's a nice start. For the engine, it says it's an I-4 for the engine block, made out of light aluminum for the block material. With the bore, it claims a 1.6 liter. The bore at a 75.0 millimeters of a stroke of 84 and a half millimeters, which gets the engine size, it's not 1.6 liters, it's 1,493 cubic centimeters, or about 1.5 liters, rounding that up. And for heads and valves, we got the DUHC Dover Cam, four valves per cylinder, made out of regular old aluminum, with a plus eight for the block it's itself. So for the internals, what the Grok is cooking says forge light for the crankshaft, forge light for the uh, right here con rods, forge light for the pistons, and a harmonic damper implemented for the balancing mass, and the balancing slider at a 60. Interesting. Normally for like other AI chatbots, they keep it at like a 50. 
Especially they recently updated the build list not that long ago, and plus eight for the bottom and quality. For the compression, it's just one click down to a 9.5, 9.5 to 1 ratio, with the cam profile set, not too bad, a 55. The springs and lifters up to a 60. With the VVT, it claims only for the intake, but no VVL, and... Where is the RPM limit? Where is the paper towels? And the quality for the top end also. Oh man, I probably have to go uh, back to this in the Grok menu real soon here. So it's not turbocharged because I requested a naturally aspirated build. So for the fuel system, it claims it's fuel injected. So it's a multi-point electronic fuel injector, hence it being multi-point with... It says twin. So for now, single. I'm going to ask this again in Grok. And we're going to be using a standard low intake for the manifold. The size is as is to a 50, with the fuel octane rating it says 91, but this is in RON. I accidentally thought that 91 was premium because they got this set to AKI, but according to the little conversion here in RON to AKI, 91 equals to 87 AKI, which is regular gasoline. The ignition timing margin right below this still at a zero, fuel mapping at a zero, plus it with the fuel quality setting. And finally for the exhaust, so we're starting off with some tubular mid-headers with a 70 in the exhaust, or a header size at 70. With a dual exhaust, there's no dual exhaust, come on man. So 40 millimeters re-exhaust, which round this up will be 1.5 inches or 38.1 millimeters because this is the closest to 40. And the cats, we got some regular old three ways, double baffle for the mufflers, oh no, um, plus six. That ain't enough, folks. So first impressions, the exhaust is choking, same thing with the uh, intake manifold because of it being a standard low setting. That improves it, but we can't change it because it says standard low in the build list. So going back to the RPM limit, first of all I'm going to re-roll with the RPM limit, the top end quality, as well as the type of fuel like the uh, throttle body configuration in Grok right now. Okay, so the engine's RPM and top and quality were generated, and twin injectors don't work on here. So, it's going to redo this. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do this. Let's see. You are a dumbass, Grok. You are a dumbass. You're still saying twin, and you're going on with the rest of the build list yet again, like it's freaking a table or something. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. The engine's RPM. Uh, what the hell? Do you, what the hell did you do? I did not ask for this. I did not ask for this. I've canceled your request. I did not ask for this, man. I said generate the three. Just say I only need the RPM and top end quality numbers and the correct type of injectors, either a single or a throttle. Let's see. Top end's at an eight, and it's a twin. God damn, Grok, you are harder than frickin' quote-unquote woke chat GPT. So, plus eight. Improved a little bit, but it ain't much. Okay, please give me a damn number, Grok. Do not tell me if you smell what the Grok is cooking. The Grok says, the Grok says, the Grok says. Yes, you're gonna still say the Grok says, the Grok says, the Grok says, like it's freaking uh, 2,000 to 6,500 RPM. <laughs> The RPM limit for the EcoDrive engine is not provided in the specifications. I told you to say it's between 2,000 to 12,000 RPM. Just give me a damn number. What if I tell it to generate between 2,000 to 12,000 RPM while rounding to the nearest hundred? Let's see. Let's just uh, change the narrative. <laughs> yes. No. Anything higher? Please, higher than 3,700. I mean, 37 on here is... Terrible. <laughs> God damn, you are a smartass! <laughs> You're still not giving me a number, just anything higher? Uh, yeah, yes, the, the RPM limit is good because it's a plus C on the top end's quality, which means it's good between 2,000 to 6,500 RPM. In this range, it is good for fuel economy as well as performance for optimal uh, drive quality and versus bullish. Let's just regenerate the 2,000 to 12,000. I swear to God, if it gives me... Yes, the RPM limit... It... No. 
So what's to say go back to the engine? Well, I'll just say, yes, the engine's between 2,000 and is it in the specifications. The top end quality is between, what's to say 6,500, uh, 6, I'm, I'm like freaking dumb with this bullish. Come on, 65. Good enough. Okay, Grok, you got one shot. I can't choose twin because the four cylinder. Single or TBC or throttle per cylinder, TBL, whatever. It will be, e uh, yes, the eagle. It can be config. <laughs> you either got two choices. It's either single or throttle per cylinder. Please, can you choose which only one, only one will be used for this engine? Jackass. I guess keep that single or throttle per cylinder. Oh my god! But we get rid of standard low, so I guess single it is. So I guess we're all good with the engine because freaking Grok is a smart ass like the rock. So we get the final horsepower rating for the engine at 96.3 horsepower at 4900 RPM with a torque rating of 115.6 pounds feet of torque at 3400 RPM. So it could barely crack 100 horsepower with this engine and it is a bit torque heavy on the somewhat of a low end. So now, let's give you a pull test of this anti-woke Family 52 Variant 1 engine that we got here. So, let's go to sleep, according to Elon Musk, and do a pull test. Kids, those pops and bangs right there from that engine is Elon Musk and the frickin' market cap of Twitter X going down because go screw yourself. And even going back to the family and variant one on the engine, like the name of it, can I generate the name right here? Okay, so the model and variant name of the engine, according to XAI's Grok, just the Grok, um, EcoDrive E10, rated E10 for ages 10 and up. So with the EcoDrive E10, EcoDrive E10 with the car and the engine, so for the drive type, I believe it's front wheel drive of an automatic, I don't know speed. Well, the top speed's 120 miles per hour, but I need some gears. So according to Grok, the EcoDrive will have five gears, five forward, one reverse, meaning just a general five speed. So like you said, five speed, top speed, 120 miles per hour, a little bit too much for this type of powerful power rating of a car so clutch lsd power split is not available because of it being a front wheel drive and drafting quality plus six not too bad for the tires since i don't have anything with the tire type like uh in the little build list here so since it's 2010 like every other car tire radio with a let's see where am i at medium compound tires of 205s for the front and back 205 millimeters with the following diameter not diameter Tire profile at P20560 R16s. So currently, we're riding on some 18 inch rims front and back, so we have to drop these to 16 inch rims. And for the tire diameter, just drop this till we get to the 60. So, mm, right here, 660. So P205s, 60s, R16s, but with the little load index and speed rating, it has not, I have not given any parameters to generate this type of number here, so this will have to do it at 99U. Rim type is made of alloy rims, plus seven on the tire quality. For the brakes, we got some Venetis brakes front and back. So Venetis four piston brakes with its size, damn, 300, barely 320 millimeters. I thought it wouldn't make it. And the rear is rear Venetis two piston brakes, 280 millimeters. Front brake force is at a hundred percent, while the rear, this is gonna be OP 80%. And even more OP as the brake pad type is at a 60, leaning a little bit more towards the racing setting of sport level. Plus in the brake quality, so the brakes are going to lock up if you don't have ABS brakes. The undertray of this car claims semi-clad undertray with cooling flaps. We do have them for the first time in these AI generated videos. Engine airflow, the cooling airflow will be set to a 70, while the brakes are at a 40 with the aerodynamics quality plus 5. For the interior of this car, we don't have a convertible because it's a General Mills sedan. General Mills sedan, damn it. <laughs> and it's a five-seater. Two seats in the front, a full bench seat in the back, a two-by-three, with the interior type set to a premium with a CD player that is a standard CD player. And the quality for the interior is a plus eight. 
And for the steering, safety aids and everything, so for the steering, it's electrical, variable type of steering with traction control and ABS brakes with traction aids, with it set to a plus 6 for the quality. With the use for safety standards of advanced 2010 safety standards, with it being at a plus 8 for the safety quality. The optimized weight slider claims we should be going up to a 60 by making it more lighter, and the weight distribution, a little bit more towards the front at a 55. And lastly, for the general car build with the suspension is for the types of springs, we'll be choosing progressive springs, twin to, uh, excuse me, gas mount to dampers, semi-active sway bars, running on a normal preset, set to a plus seven on the quality. And right away this car, ooh, look at the markets. Ooh, nice. So the markets and everything are not too bad for an AI generated car, but right away with the Wow, drivability 100%, so a balance between understeer, not too much oversteer, generally more understeer at medium speeds. So the car understeers as normally, like a front-wheel drive car, it stays pretty much in shape. The sport setting here, the sportiness factor with the steering, not too bad, as it's more of a freaking economical car than a sports car. And speaking of sports car, MPG rating is 30.3 US miles per gallon, over 30 miles per gallon US, which isn't that bad. So with the car, not too bad, uh, 12.8 12 seconds, 0 to 62, and the top speed is... Pretty much right, 116 and 120 that the build list gave to me, so spot on with the top speed, very spot on, but slow as 0 to 62, which won't beat the adventure in terms of that because of it being super lightweight with a carbon fiber chassis and everything in general. So everything about this car in terms of the building part is ho oh, oh, ho all good. The rear brakes are overlapping the fronts. Damn, I forgot about this. So it's rightfully ignore the brakes, the downforce, and everything else in general because we're about to be... Let's first of all paint it. The paint says Midnight Blue, so I think this is good enough and uh... God damn it, automation with your weird ass. Well, this is a bot body. I can't blame automation automation. So you go on the roof here and then just click on Caribou, which is supposed to be Midnight Blue, and color on the roof. So, we got all that done, let's get ready to design the car, like actually design it in a time-lapse video as per usual to design this car from the front, sides, and back, and prepare to drive this car in BMG Drive and go against the next adventure. So, let's commence the time-lapse of this build right now. So, for the design of this car, unfortunately, there isn't a time-lapse to be designing a car because of frickin' Microsoft forcefully upgraded my computer to Windows 11. I literally lost over three hours of footage thanks to this. What I can say briefly about this car is that the front end is inspired by most Ford products from the last decade like the Ford Fusion and Mustang. The sides aren't really that interesting as you can see here, just a little body molding on the sides, mirrors and you know the drill there. And for the back end, it's fairly basic but unique. I got these brake lights and DRLs that run from each corner of the brake light housing on each side, along with a molding, license plate molding, that kind of molds pretty good with the actual taillight housing as it fits pretty well with this little modded fixture here. And it capped it off with a base diffuser to add a little more style and a tad bit more aerodynamics in Beam and G as well as on automation. So anyways, as you probably know the drill about this car as you've seen earlier, we got these three problems that still exist, such as the front and rear brake force is very high and the engine has an unutilized octane. Let's jump on over to BMG Drive to see if the Grok is cooking in BMG. So here we are at the grid map version 2, like I've been doing, testing out the AI generated cars, even with this EcoDrive E10 or the Nexa Adventure, which is next to me, which I'll compare this car, the E10, with the Adventure if you don't know about the specs of this car or how it drives, if you're new to the series. So to compare this car, the E10, we're going to start by doing the basic performance test with this car as per usual by Automation Beam and G builds. We'll start off with the 0 to 62 acceleration test, followed by the 62 to 0 brake test, and then a top speed run with both of these cars. So, let's we'll start off with the acceleration test starting now. Start for our five gears. First gear, 29 miles an hour. Second gear, 42 miles an hour. I believe third gear and beyond will be 62 miles an hour, 100 kilometers and beyond. 0 to 62 in what Automation said 12.90 seconds of 749.77 feet. 
So automation is true about the time, 12.9 seconds of a distance, almost exactly 750 feet. So for the brakes, 62, it says 63 on the thingy majig, the cruise control, 62 to zero and 4.07 seconds of 170.23 feet. So time-wise isn't the best out of all this. A time's pretty mediocre because of the strong brakes front and back and the ABS not trying to lock up the brakes, which also contributed to a somewhat of a long distance, braking distance of 170 feet. So for a top speed run or in effect, let's see if we get a better zero to 62. The same, 12.90 <laughs> of 750.85 feet. So this is fourth gear, I assume. Going above highway speeds, freaking Texas highway speeds, and this is fifth gear, according to automation from oh, maybe the chat bot on automation in general, both those two. The top speed claims 120 miles per hour. We got a little bit of breathing room to get up to its top speed if it can, before it crashes out somewhere or something like that. So right now, triple digit speeds, 102, 103, and so on. It seems like getting the top speed, even though the little graph on the top speed, like the drivetrain menu in automation said 114 with the applied aerodynamics with the front, oh no, first of all, rear diffuser, and the front lip right here. And it's a fail because 120 miles an hour. I was going to brace myself for the collision, but whatever. Now for the adventure, uh, I actually went the pause menu, so 062 underway, start her up as so, so this car, if you don't know about it, it flies through the gears super big duper cooper quickly to get a 0 to 62 in 8.33 seconds of 445.57 feet, so about a 4.5, 4.6 second difference compared to this car and the EcoDrive E10. So airspeed claims 62 is first of all to be a little more accurate. Brakes. It could be 62. Yes, indeed. Is it 62 to zero in 2.67 seconds of 113.61 feet. So with this car compared to the E10, we got the time compared to E10. It was a four second brake time of 170 feet. Well, we did about 1.3 seconds better than the E10 and about 57 feet better with this car compared to the other car. So for a top speed run, um, slightly better, zero to 62, about a few tenths better and one foot better, 8.2, 8.3 seconds. It seems like the best of this car and I believe the top speed is like 110, right? Yeah. Yeah, six gears, 110 miles an hour. So if this car, it can reach its top speed very quickly compared to the E10 where it takes a long, long ass time to get to the top speed because one, this car is lightweight. A, uh, it's, it's, it's a six speed manual. I thought this was a sequential shifter. The six speed manual, like 120, 130 horsepower, something like that on top of a carbon fiber chassis and everything like lightweight with this wannabe Sayat Volkswagen Golf kind of car. So now, let's crash this out using the new cinematic camera, which is a game changer now. So I have to go like free roam, pause, uh, slow motion, uh, crash like that, how I used to do it. But now with the cinematic camera, the in-game automatic cinematic camera, I don't have to really do that anymore. So now let's compare the E10, this car, put this onto a little test track and a time trial run to see if it can beat the Aventura once and for all, which I doubt it can do that. So here we are at the automation test track with the handling circuit and just like the other cars, the next Aventura, Turbo Nova SGT, Honda Civic, Toyota Echo, and the Hawkeye Idol, the other AI generated cars. We're going to be doing two laps with a rolling start to hope to beat a time, which is the best of all the AI cars, the next Aventura, of a 2 minutes, 48 seconds, 121 milliseconds. I doubt it can beat that time, but hey, at least give it a shot to see if it can beat its time, or be worse, better, or who knows about this car, knowing this thing is pretty damn slow. So anyways, let's start things off here in, ready, go. 3500 RPM launch. Power shows 95 brake horsepower, 100, first of all, 116 pounds feet of torque. Say, so first of all, let's get my eyes on the road and not be a dumbass and wreck in the first corner. So, first impressions right away of the car 
Fairly slow, but... A little bit of an off-camber. Fairly slow, but... Quite manageable in terms of the steering as I go a little bit hot here because it's been a hot while since I've been on this track. Normally I do this for like lightweight cars or like these AI generated cars and so on. Because there's some cars that I did make according to the specs given by the chatbots where it's like powerful as this or a little bit more powerful but the handling is like terrible, like god awfully terrible. And by the crest signs, about 52 seconds going right there, which should be like a minute 30, minute 40 something lap time. Normally, a good lap time, I think with the adventure, was like 40 seconds or something like that, like in the mid 40s. So yeah, like I said, I had cars that were generated like this, where it's this powerful or more powerful or something like that, but the handling was like god awfully terrible. A one minute. Where's the first lap time? 1 minute 36 seconds, roughly, is our first lap. Let's hope we can stay under 310. Hope we get a good uh, podium spot with the other AI-generated cars. I'd say I'm pretty impressed by the handling so far for a car like this. A little over 3,000 pounds, a 1.4, 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine, but not too powerful. Damn, a little bit hot there. Not too powerful as, like I said, you can see in the top right with the little torque graph. 95 brake horsepower, 116 pounds feet of torque, and it was very similar to that in automation with the, of course, the engine designer, just seeing it as so. If it generated a standard bid type of uh, intake manifold, then this thing, like you probably seen earlier, would be like maybe 110, 115 horsepower. Like, where the torque value is at, that should have been a horsepower rating. But unfortunately, since it generated a low intake manifold, we are a bit, like, down in power compared to the other cars and what it really should be to get a good lap time. And come up to the final corner. Damn near corner cut. It's so a 310. Is this broken? 310? 311? 3 minutes 11 seconds, 139 milliseconds puts us in 5th place, even though there's a car ahead of me, the Nexa Adventure GT1. Freaking Film 186's car, well, the car for Film 186 is like building race stream like a few months ago. But unfortunately, we did not beat the Nexa Aventura Aventura, the actual car of a 248. Second place is the Turbo Nova SGT, the turbocharged chat GPT car. Fourth is the Toyota Echo, the Google Bard or Google Gemini car. Fifth is where we're at, so technically fourth place, of the EcoDrive Grok AI car. Sixth is the Hawkeye Idol, which is the automation AI generated car. And seventh, the Honda Civic, aka the Bing Chat, now Microsoft Co-Pilot car. So, we're not dead last, so... Fair enough, I guess. <laughs> so anyways, despite that weak-ass collision, let's drop this bad boy off a freaking ramp called the good old Car Jump Arena 2023, which is the paid mod version made by the same mod author responsible for the original and very popular Car Jump Arena map. So let's go to the top of this ramp right now. So here we are at the top of the ramp, the Car Jump Arena 2023 map. So currently we got a three light, a four light, and a five light. So get ready to start here on green. Go, we got the green. Slowly pan the camera by goddamn analog stick of this controller. Very slowly, very slowly, come down to the bottom of the ramp. Well, bottom of the angle and everything. Zero to 62, freaking next adventure level. Eight seconds, 23, or 32 milliseconds, about 370 feet. And 369, damn she fine. 165 on our launch, past 200 meter marker, three, and will this? I don't think so. So there's the 400 meter mark. 408 meters, so just shy of the 410 meter mark. So let's say 408 is where we land. Full time. Now the cinematic kicks in as we tumble over, end over end. Ooh, land on our wheels. Can we stay on our wheels? God damn, the freaking tires are jiggling like crazy. And in the sand. Yellow flag is out in the sand. Still in the sand. Sleep with the fishes. And just flooding with water. And we're sleeping with the fishes according to top left. That, that's new. When you go when you jump into water, I think, you uh, trigger that little warning to come up. And red flag. Yeah. Stop what you're doing. And save me right now. 
So a final look at this car before we send her on off. So the freaking 3D, the or ED, the Eco Drive logo is starting to look a little, a little bit suggestive if you have a dirty mind. So the rear end pretty mangled up. The diffuser still on. Sides okay. That side almost pristine despite the little deformity with the little mirror turn indicator. In the front, not too bad despite some creak windows with the roof, a little bit of the hood line. And the license plate being a little bit messed up, but still drivable. I mean, here's proof. Yeah. So with the Grok AI generated car, the EcoDrive E10, it isn't the best in terms of power, but it surprisingly handles well. It produces under 100 horsepower and has a 0 to 62 in 13 seconds. However, it's good on gas and is quite roomy for what it's worth. Unfortunately, it didn't beat the Nexa Aventura in terms of performance and lap times, but it's a well-generated car. Even though it was a pain in the ass trying to get Grok to clarify and regenerate things that it needed to to make this possible, I guess that's what happens when you spend $8 on a Twitter subscription to get access to Grok to build this car. So anyways, that'll do it with Automation and BMG Drive. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.